To understand all the facets of pre-production, we're gonna have to start at the very root of all of these things, which is the project treatment. This is the document that the director and the production company will have sold to the client and the agency. This is what you're expected to deliver. And if you're not familiar with treatments or how they look, uh, you should get familiar with them. Reach out to individuals that you know that work in the system and try and get a hold of as many treatments as you can because they are all different. None of them are the same. Different directors inside of produ production companies will have different ways that they like to treat. Some people like to treat less. Some people like to treat more. But really, the important thing to remember is this is your first glimpse at what you will be asked to interpret. Right? This is the first vision from the director that everyone can look at and see, oh, okay, this is our jumping off point. This is where all of our ideas early on in the pre-production cycle should have some link to this document, right? Because it really serves as that springboard for the entire production. So uh, oftentimes the, the final spot may end up looking significantly different than the treatment. But again, its purpose is to serve as that springboard for ideas, for conversation, for location managers to go out and start looking. So there's lots of little things that you can look for inside of the treatment that will help you do your job better. Okay, so in this section, we're going to look at a treatment. This is a treatment that I just came up with now, uh, just in, as an example. I've stolen words from another treatment. This is just a, uh, you know, we're looking at a fake car ad, and this is how treatments normally come through. They're usually highly stylized because you're trying to sell a vision and the kind of things that you're going to bring to the project as a director. So this is what you would normally get in the pre-production process of, hey, here's the script, here's the pre-production um, schedule, here is the treatment, and maybe you'll get some storyboards as well if they're agency storyboards, if they're that far down the process or if it's that type of job. So let's take a look at how we would use some of this information inside of a treatment to help facilitate our pre-production process. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Really, this is just the title page to give you some sort of indication. We're looking at a car spot. There's gonna be something dark and moody. The majority of the time I'm looking at the imagery, right? The words really, the, the treatments cover so many different um, areas and so many different departments that generally there'll be one or two pages, depending on the size of the treatment, that will be specifically about cinematography. Obviously, you want to read those. Um, and, but sometimes you'll be looking at the treatment before you have a chat with the director. Sometimes you'll be uh, given it after you've already been signed on to the job and you're already well in the pre-production process. But uh, what you really want to be looking at is the imagery, right? What kind of images they're sending through, what kind of mood they are looking for. Um, but then also go through, read the words, come get up to speed with... Uh, you know, what the, the project looks like as a whole. So for us, immediately on this title page, I know, okay, car spot, dark and dirty. I already see the framing of the treatment already tells me anamorphic, right? So I already know what the director is thinking without going any further. Plus, there's a little flare in there in that title spot. We get to the very first page and it sings out, okay, it looks like uh, we're doing something big, right? A big, wide, epic shot, car in the foreground. Again, not a whole lot of beauty lighting on the car. So that leads me to believe um, this might be, we might be going for a little bit darker, a little bit more natural, a little bit moodier than say a commercial retail car spot, which is uh, significantly different. We've got, again, the anamorphic frame in the uh, treatment itself. Um, and then we've got the concept here, just a little 60 second spot. Okay, we read all that stuff, uh, but really looking at the natural light here, and giving me some indication of the, the mood, the colors, notice the oranges and the blues. It's also something to pick up on, go okay. And then I would just be taking notes here so that in my conversation with the director, I can bring these things up, right? Page two, that image that I really liked, I'll specifically go through the treatment and pick out three or four key images that I'm really fond of. And we'll keep reverting back to that because you just wanna slightly knock the director's um, tastes or the production's taste or what they can expect from your skills. You just want to slightly nudge them towards the direction that you want to go. So if you see something that, you know, we go to the next page, if you see something that maybe you don't like in shot number three, or maybe you don't like the mood or the color or the vibe, you know, maybe talk about those less and bring up the other things more to try and just skew, you know, edit the conversation so that you're able to, to lean it towards things that you're interested in. So this is just a title page. Now we get into the different scenarios and lots of times you'll have multiple images. Here, the very first thing that I'm looking at besides the anamorphic framing is the, the colors. Okay, we've got some really bold colors. There's three different scenarios judging by this. There's the drummer, the friends, and the car wash, okay? Three different areas, three different vignettes means three location moves. 
So now I already know if, if I've already been told the schedule and this is now, a, you know, I know this is a one day shoot and I'm looking at three different scenarios. Well, now I'm already thinking about the lighting setups because I know generally with this production company that sent me this thing and this director, I know to what budget they're generally working towards. So I know the, the amount of people and probably what I'm going to be able to get away with when it comes to equipment and lighting and generators and all those things. So I'm already starting to formulate, okay, three locations, one day, three vignettes. Uh, it's going to have to be moody. It's going to have to be lit for 360 because that's the way this director likes to work. So it's going to be very atmospheric. It's going to be very, uh, well, I can already see in these very first four images, it's dark, it's moody, uh, and it's hazy. Right? So haze is going to be a big thing. Probably the first conversation I talk with the director. Uh, there's lots of mood. There's lots of texture in the image. Are we adding grain? Are we shooting at a higher ISO? These are questions that I'm going to just have in the back of my mind. I'll write some of these things down, some of the framing ideas, some of the framing options. But just know that, okay, I'm looking at this three different scenarios. Bang. I already know. I'm thinking schedule. I'm thinking time. Uh, what's possible. We go to the next one. Again, more about the story that usually happens in treatments where they'll uh, find them. There's things in here about camera movement and cuts and all of those things. So just be aware that you should, you know, if this says something about uh, an incredibly fast paced ad, it's 60 seconds, there's three vignettes. We're probably not looking at five second long shots. We're probably looking at a series of very quick cuts, which will affect the lighting, right? Because we can be a little bit tighter with the lighting. We don't have to be quite as uh, spread out if we're not doing some giant long walk and talk situation. We can be much more detailed. We can focus on specific areas. Same with the haze opportunities. Um, you know, you go through and you can read this on your own, but we've got color and framing in here that match the previous one. That red seems really, really strong. That could be a brand color. Again, something to ask about what the brand colors are, what we should be leaning towards. Is there a preferred palette? Um, and then in the car interiors, like here, just this single image that we're looking at here of this girl in this car, um, what it tells me is there's not a whole lot of interior car lighting in here. We're not going for beauty lighting. We're going for something more raw, something more natural, something down. Again, backlit, you know, looking at the types of images to make sure that it matches up not only with your aesthetic, but also an aesthetic that you can actually commit to and perform. Again, this next page, more fluff about what's actually happening in the spot, not so much on the cinematography, but you'll see, again, natural light, not much in the car. You know, maybe a little bounce back here, but we're not talking about the lighting. We're talking about what I would go through in the treatment and look at. Uh, again, we're back at that magic hour look. So if we're selling magic hour and we only have a day to do this, and we've got three different scenarios. Well, now I know that starts to affect my schedule. If the, one of the scenario, if two of the scenarios are indoors, perfect. Then we can do the magic hour one when we need to at the, at the scheduled time. We just have to factor that in with the first AV and the producer and the location manager and let them know, okay, We've got this one magic hour scene, which means everything has to revolve around that scene because we know we have to be outside at this specific time and then we work out from there. Okay, that's just another thing you should be looking at when you're looking at these treatments. Just besides the mood, I'm already thinking schedule. I'm thinking color. I'm thinking level. What amount of lights we're going to need, right? For this one again, um, you know, moody, down, uh, haze, streaks of light. Again, this one just talks about uh, specific scenarios. This is a clock. There's a clock involved. There's, uh, you know, some of the sounds, some of the casting that is talked about here, um, and just various different ideas. But from a framing standpoint, right, we're really, we can judge everything in this scenario, this drummer scenario, should really be about this wide shot. You know, it's one light, which is something that we might be able to get away with in a very quick, um, cutty ad, where you've got these three different scenarios, you really just light the area like it is down here on page 10. Down here, you light the area, and then you just get in there and hose it down, right? And that may be an approach that the director wants to use. So then it might not be specific storyboards. It's just like we light each vignette once, we make it look great for the wide shot, and then we just hose it down. And we try and get some interesting things, and we try different things, maybe we try some off-speed stuff, maybe to keep the ticking clock that this treatment talks about. Maybe we slow it down just a little bit so they have the ability to retime at their leisure to really match up with things. Um, again, just different ideas of what you can bring to the table and what suggestions you can make to show that you're involved, show that you want to make this thing better and, and, uh, and get across it so you know what to tell your crew, right? The earlier you can get this stuff, 
this feedback back from the director and the producer about where they're seeing this elevating to, where they're seeing this uh, evolving to, the easier it's going to make your job. Okay, one of the scenes is car wash. I'm going to hope that the car wash is at nighttime, and it is. Okay, now why is it good that uh, the car wash is at nighttime? Because it's not inside. We have that magic hour shoot. Uh, daytime car wash is going to be really difficult for angle of light and location, and it would be a lot to ask for a location manager to be able to nail this many locations. If I'm getting involved late in the piece, that probably means we're not going to get the greatest locations for the light for daytime. But here, nighttime, okay, well now I can start to create some mood at nighttime given enough time and given the tools necessary. Uh, I see a rain machine. Uh, very first thing here, I notice lots of rain, I notice lots of highlights, I notice lots of close-ups. So now, as we're looking here, if I'm noticing these lo lots of these close-up scenes, oh, there's something called the macro world here. I know equipment-wise, okay, I'm going to need diopters. I'm going to need to think about the lenses to make sure that we have this ability to get the camera into positions that it needs to get to. Because cars are tight little spots and they're hard to film in. Um, and if you're going to want to get really close to the odometer or to the... Um, to the wheels or to whatever it is, you're going to want to make sure that you think about just how big the camera's going to be, how you're going to get the lens that close, how you're going to light those things. Um, you know, even in these texture remarks here, it's like that shot of the um, the gauges, I mean, that's really close. That's hard to get in some cars. If you don't have the right car, you're going to want to take a look at that and see, research those things so you know uh, exactly what to look for. Back to the rain for just a sec. I'm, I'm going to want to find out from the director just how wide they want to be in these nighttime things. You know, just bring it up in the back of my mind. I want to know how wide it's because that will dictate all the lighting that we need. Take a look at some of the preliminary locations to try and figure out how we can contain the space a little bit more. Because doing three scenarios in a day without much of a pre-light, I know it's going to be hard to do giant areas. But if we can use some layers and some buildings and something to to light up and hide, then that just gives me... It just gives me uh, more options. Gives, lets me know exactly what I have to be lighting towards. And then that'll involve the equipment as well. Then there's some close-ups here, which I know are always um, easy to fit into the schedule, but uh, sometimes can be demanding on the equipment of just knowing, okay, how are we going to move the camera? How are we going to pace the camera? Uh, again, what lenses we can use in this situation? What are we looking for? Because a lot of times these textural moments will not be included in storyboards, they'll just be like additional pickups, like in between scenes or in between casts coming onto set. Just look for these opportunities. So I'm gonna be one, I'm gonna wanna be asking about that. What should I be looking for? What sort of textures, all those things. And then we get into the actual car, uh, car interior stuff here, where again, you're just going through the process of saying, what am I gonna need? Where can we do this? If we're doing running shots of the car, I know I'm going to want it backlit. I know I'm going to want soft skies, so I'm going to want it later in the day. So now the schedule is getting even more complex before we've even started. Um, this stuff, this interior car stuff, I can do that in the middle of the day in a studio because it has to be lit. You don't need much in there. Um, and then the sound design section. Again, you can you know very quickly go over this stuff uh, before your initial conversations and before your planning stages because um, you're really looking at the images and the mood that they're trying to create in order to get there. Um, and then finally, more images. Again, I'm looking at natural light. I'm looking at very dark and moody. I'm looking at magic hour, uh, blue skies, really orange orange skies and the sunsetty stuff, and then blue skies after it's gone down, mixing that time of day and mixing that darkness with little pops of light. And then those macro elements, those floating elements, it's, uh, it's gonna make a big difference in the gear that we select. And that's it. That's really the, the first pass at the treatment which will then dictate so many of these questions. So many of our conversations with the director, so many of the conversations with the key crew, even uh, for what crew you're going to want, right? If you're doing this big car thing, I'm gonna want a, a grip team that has the experience working with cars, working with uh, those sorts of mounts. Uh, there may be someone that, that is maybe a little bit better on the dolly than there is you know, another group that's slightly better with rigs. And uh, knowing this information, I'm gonna know which way to go and which way to, to jump off the entire process. So looking at treatments and breaking down treatments and, and formulating a series of questions based on those treatments is a huge step in cinematography and for cinematographers in pre-production. It can, uh, you know, just this simple 20-page document 
has already got all of the ideas flowing of which way we're going to go and how long it's going to take and what the pain, what the pain points are going to be and maybe what I should clarify with the director, what I should clarify with the producer, you know, what color is the car going to be? Uh, how long are we going to have the car for? Uh, is that, you know, who's driving the thing? These are all questions that come that wouldn't have come without seeing this treatment, right? You're just, you're operating in a world without that anchor. And this is really, this is the point where uh, everyone can just gravitate towards and know exactly what we're going for. So that really is important that you get across the treatment, uh, formulate those questions, and then as soon as you can, act on them to try and get some clarification if needed, uh, get some uh, some hard times and dates from first AD, wondering, you know, how long, are, is this actually one day? Because right now, going through the treatment, it seems like we don't have enough evening time to get the shots that are necessary. So maybe we can push it out to two. Talk with the producer, talk with the director. Is this a possibility? In my mind, I don't know if we can really get it done. It might be better to do two half days or a donut day where we're doing sunrise, sunset, and if they're against overtime or something like that. Just coming together uh, with a series of questions and then just questioning everything. Uh, but, you know, again, it's a, it's a fine line between going overboard and being annoying and getting it just right. Any of these things that you can answer on your own, do it. Anything that needs to be brought up that you think will impact the project um, for better or for worse, anything that you think will make a substantial difference, that's when you have to voice those things and voice them with the correct people, right? You're not going to CC seven people uh, from the wardrobe to art department to the location manager about specific uh, macro elements that you're after or what you should be looking for. Right, identify the right people and don't waste anybody's time is the big takeaway. So treatments are a huge thing. You're going to come across tons of them. Some will be very detailed. Some will be very uh, vague. Uh, just come up with a system for generating that first round of questions and generating that springboard to help you in the creative process, help you in the technical process, and help you in the managerial side of things to, to know the people that you're going to have to bring on. A great treatment plays such a key role in the commercial production where time is of the essence and getting people on board is so important because your window for pre-production is so um, narrow and so contained that the more you can get done and the more answers you can get immediately, it will only make the process easier. So come up with your own system, uh, stick to it, improve on it, always be working on it, and you'll definitely start to see the rewards of that effort.